Having imbalanced hormones can be a major buzzkill. Painful periods, moodiness and irritability, acne, all this kind of stuff can really affect your quality of life. So in this video, I'm going to talk about how to balance your hormones naturally. Hey everyone, thanks for joining me. I'm so happy that you are here. My name is Jills and I talk all about health, wellness, and self-development for women. So if that's something that interests you, be sure to hit the red subscribe button below as well as the notification bell so you don't miss when I put out any new videos. So today I wanted to chat with you guys about how to balance your hormones naturally. Now unfortunately, I feel like this is a topic that a lot of women can relate to and understand because unfortunately it's just so common in today's world and it can really affect your daily life. So if you're having a hormonal imbalance, then you might experience symptoms like acne, especially painful acne around your chin, mouth, jawline, that whole area, that's a huge hormonal area, as well as low libido, painful or irregular periods, or maybe even no period, um, bloating before your period, and just a general lack of energy and enthusiasm for life. All of those can be really strong signs that you're having a hormonal imbalance. Back in the day, I had absolutely terrible period cramps that would keep me in bed for days and loaded up on Advil. And I had acne on my chin that eventually turned into cystic acne and just a whole lot of problems, a lot of emotional ups and downs too. And I feel like I was just kind of oblivious back then. And I obviously knew that I was experiencing these symptoms, but these symptoms were so common that I thought that they were normal. But remember that just because they're common doesn't mean that they are normal. It doesn't mean that you have to have them because you don't. But luckily, things have improved dramatically for me over the years, so I can say that a lot of these natural practices do really work. But I will say that healing your hormones is not an overnight process, and it can take time. You have to let your body heal, and healing takes time. So be patient with yourself, be gentle with yourself, and give these practices at least a few months before you reevaluate and see if they're working or not. Now with that said, let's talk about how to balance your hormones naturally. Now the first thing is to eat a more nutrient-dense diet, which might be a little obvious, but this is so, so important, so I have to mention it. Our body needs the nutrients, healthy quality nutrients to work properly, to function effectively. So we need a healthy diet. So aim for like whole foods, tons of fruits and veggies, healthy fats like avocado, nuts and seeds, healthy proteins. If you eat meat, aim for things that are like grass fed, pasture raised, organic, especially products that don't have added hormones or antibiotics because those are not gonna help balance your hormones. You wanna avoid things that are just kind of like what I call processed junk, candy, pizza, cereal, all this kind of stuff. There's really not much nutritional value for you there. Um, and it's also best to avoid other inflammatory foods, like for example, dairy. Dairy usually doesn't sit uh, very well with people. It doesn't <laughs> sit very well with me. Inflammatory vegetable oils like canola oil, um, all this kind of stuff, just too much sugar, all this kind of stuff can really just, it's not that great for you. Now with that said, I do believe that sometimes you just gotta feed your soul and order in that pizza on a Friday night and enjoy. But for the majority of the time, your meals should be healthy, whole food based, nutrient dense meals. My biggest advice when eating healthy is to stop looking at the calories and start looking at the ingredients. So when you look at the ingredients, ask yourself, do I know what all this stuff is? Does it sound natural or more like chemicals? Is this all stuff that I might have in my pantry already? Because if so, then you're already doing a really good job. Oh, and also make sure you're eating enough food because eating too little or extreme dieting can be a huge trigger for hormonal imbalance. And the second thing is to make sure you are exercising in the right way to support your body instead of stressing your body out even more. Obviously working out and just movement in general is really good for us and really healthy and something that we should all be doing. But if you want to try to balance your hormones, it's actually better to stick to more lower impact workouts and shorter workouts. Remember that exercise is still a stress 
on the body. So while we're trying to heal our body and heal our hormones, we want to be really gentle with ourselves. Try to keep your workouts to 30 minutes or under if you can and avoid things like high intensity interval training and extreme cardio because these can all be a really big stress on the body. And instead, try workouts more like bar, yoga, Pilates. These are all amazing for hormone balance. If you do want to do more of like an intense sweaty kind of workout, then definitely keep it under 30 minutes for sure. If your workouts are too long or too intense, then this can cause too much stress on the body and the body will then release a lot of cortisol, which is not ideal for hormonal health. And next, it's important to get enough sleep. If you haven't been already prioritizing this, then you absolutely need to. Our sleep is when we restore and repair, and so this time is so, so, so important. And sleep deprivation can really wreak havoc on our hormonal health. You need on average seven to nine hours, but if your body is trying to heal and balance your hormones, then you likely might need closer to the nine range. So make sure you're prioritizing this and getting to bed on time. Do whatever it is you have to do to get to bed on time. A big thing that helps me is creating an evening wind down routine to kind of help me mentally prepare for bed and tell my body that you're going to go to sleep soon. So turning down the lights, maybe putting some lavender in the diffuser, or reading a nice calming book. I recommend you don't read the news or scroll social media too late at night because this can just kind of get your brain buzzing again. Read something light, read something easy. Don't think about life's biggest topics at night. Just create some sort of a wind down routine that works for you, something that settles you, something that calms you, something that gets you ready to sleep. And if you have to, set an alarm on your phone too to let you know when you should be getting ready to go to bed. This can really help me. Sometimes we just kind of get distracted. Sleep is very, very important, so don't skimp on this one. Now, another thing you should really focus on if you're trying to balance your hormones naturally is stress management. And I know this is so much easier said than done. I totally understand, but this is a really big thing and it has a big impact on our hormones but i think it's important that you understand the actual science as to why this is so detrimental for our hormones well there are actually a lot of reasons but one main reason is because when your body gets stressed your body produces the hormone called cortisol but cortisol and progesterone progesterone is another really important hormone in our cycle both of these hormones are produced from the same mother hormone, so to say. So when our body needs to produce cortisol, our progesterone levels get sacrificed. And then this can cause a hormonal imbalance and create those really common estrogen excess symptoms that we see, like PMS, bloating, irritability, acne, all that kind of stuff. Now, of course, stress management looks different for everyone. You really have to find what works for you. You know, there's yoga, meditation, um, journaling, exercise, all this kind of stuff can be really helpful. But honestly, one of the most important things is just simply reframing your thoughts and letting things that are out of your control go. When I'm stressed, what helps me is I ask myself, what am I stressing about and can I fix it? If the answer is yes, then go fix it. But if the answer is no, which a lot of the times it is, it's important to just put the intention out into the universe that you're going to let it go and you're not gonna let it drain your energy anymore. This simple act can really, really help a lot. Something that's also really important to do when you're trying to balance your hormones naturally is switch out all of the toxic products in your household for non-toxic. You can find toxic chemicals in things like your cleaning products, makeup and skincare, air fresheners, but switching out these products won't likely give you an immediate impact. However, using them day in and day out can be a really heavy burden on your body. Not to mention that a lot of these chemicals are huge hormone disruptors. So if you haven't started switching out these products already, then it's probably time to do so. Of course, if you want to, you could totally just throw out all of your toxic products and replace them all at once, but that's really overwhelming and expensive too. So what I recommend is doing it the way that I did, which is every single time you have a product that's about to run out, just spend like 10 to 20 minutes researching, find a new one, and replace it with a non-toxic product. Eventually, after you keep doing this for about a year or two, your entire house will be totally replaced with non-toxic products, and it's really not overwhelming. I actually have two great resources for finding healthier household products, and I'll link them below. 
below. The first one is ewg.org. This is a website where you can actually look up the safety rating of tons of different household products and it kind of rates it on a scale from like one to 10. So 10 being the worst, you can see how bad it is for you. And it even talks about specific chemicals and how they might impact you. So I think it's really interesting. Now the second one is an app called Think Dirty. And basically you can scan the barcode of any product in a store and see their safety rating. And this is also very addicting. In the beginning, I do this all the time, but both of these resources have been really helpful. So go check them out. So if you haven't already, start switching out those toxic products one at a time, and eventually you will have a nice, healthy, clean home that supports your body and supports your hormones. The next thing I wanna talk about is seed cycling. And if you haven't heard of seed cycling, it might sound a little weird, but it's actually really helped a lot of people. So seed cycling is basically just eating different seeds during different times in your cycle to essentially help regulate our levels of estrogen and progesterone and balance our hormones. And people have actually used this technique to get their period back too. So here's how it works. On days one through 14, or basically on day one of your period until you ovulate, you're gonna eat one tablespoon of pumpkin seeds and one tablespoon of flax seeds every day. Then in the second half of your cycle, so basically from ovulation until you get your period again, you're going to eat one tablespoon sesame seeds and one tablespoon sunflower seeds every day. Now if you can, it's best to eat these seeds if they're ground because then it's easier for your body to digest, but they don't have to be. And you can also just incorporate this in so many easy ways, throwing them into smoothies on top of oatmeal or yogurt, sprinkling on your salad. There's a ton of ways that you could incorporate this really easily into your life. Another thing that a lot of people don't think about and that I think is so important is to make sure that you are eliminating properly. And yes, I mean poop. <laughs> and here is why this is important. Going to the bathroom is one of your body's natural detoxification processes, and this is one of the ways that your body gets rid of excess hormones. Now, if you're not going to the bathroom in a timely manner, then it's very likely that some of those hormones can then get reabsorbed into the bloodstream, causing hormonal imbalance. Unfortunately, there is an epidemic of chronic constipation in this world today. We need to be eliminating at least one to three times a day, but definitely at least once a day for sure, and it shouldn't be a huge struggle. If this is something you're struggling with, then eating a healthier whole food diet will usually help because you're usually eating a lot more fiber, but also things like drinking enough water and exercise are really important to preventing constipation. There are also abdominal massages that you can do basically where you you're kind of massaging your stomach in a circular motion. So I just recommend you Google that, it's really easy, but that can really help if you need it. And if you're just at your wits end and nothing is working and you need something that'll help you pretty soon, then magnesium citrate is a really good supplement for this. A lot of us are deficient in magnesium anyways, um, but this can be really helpful for stimulating that whole going to the bathroom process. But yeah, this is something that a lot of people don't think about, but is really important. Now remember to give yourself grace during this whole hormone balancing process. Healing is oftentimes never linear. There's usually lots of ups and downs and you kind of have to be consistent for a while. So just stay the course, trust that your body is healing, trust that your body is supporting you and helping you. And I promise that you will get there. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the like button. I really appreciate it. And subscribe if you haven't already because in the next video, I'm basically gonna give my beginner's guide to healthy eating and I think it's gonna be really helpful. So stay tuned.